In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can save your files as JPEGs in Adobe Photoshop. Great, so welcome back to my design class and to another Photoshop tutorial. What we're going to be doing is just going over the simple steps of how you can save JPEG images. Now I have made a video on how you can save images in Photoshop more recently, but because so many people were wondering as to how you can save JPEG specifically, I thought I'd make a video specifically for that. So first of all, make sure that you have your image open or your file, whatever you're going to save as a JPEG. All we have to do is go to file at the top left hand corner and then go to save a copy. So you don't want to press on save as unless you're still in the legacy save as mode. But for pretty much the majority of us, it's always going to be save a copy. And this is an update that has happened in Photoshop within the last year. And once you've selected save a copy, as you can see, a window pops up that now allows us to save our work. So at the moment, the format is set to Photoshop and we want to change this to JPEG because that's the file that we're trying to save. So we just simply press on that and then find JPEG under the options. Now, just to give a bit more context as to what a JPEG file actually is, it stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group, but everyone obviously just calls it JPEG. And basically a JPEG file is a image file that is often used for things such as photographs or even HTML documents. And basically what it does is it compresses all of the information in your file into a JPEG format. And one or two things to remember with a JPEG file, it is a lossy compression format. This means that some of your details will be lost in the image quality. But on the other hand, it does make your file size much smaller, which makes it easier to store. And another great thing about JPEGs is it actually supports all of the color modes that you might use most frequently. So including RGB, CMYK and grayscale. If by the way you're unsure as to what color mode your image is currently in, I have already made a video on how color modes work. I'll make sure I leave a link to that in the description below if you want to check that out. But anyway, let's get back to saving our images as JPEG. So if we just select on the JPEG option, as you can see, the format now says JPEG, which is exactly what we want. And then all we have to do is make sure that we've named our file correctly. So I'm just going to leave it as tutorial.jpg. And the .jpg is basically the file extension, which means it's going to be saved as a JPEG file. And then make sure you're in the correct location. And then all we have to do is press save. And now, as you can see, a new window has appeared, and this is the JPEG options window. So when we create a JPEG, we have a few options that we can customize in order to change some of the quality and formatting options of our JPEG file. So first of all, on the right hand side, we have two very important options, the first of which is preview. And this basically previews the second number. And the number basically refers to the file size that Photoshop predicts our file will be. So this is a very important number because obviously sometimes you want to be able to prioritize the file size. So perhaps you're working with online content for HTML documents and you want things to load very quickly. So you want your file size to be very small. Whereas in other cases, you might want to prioritize the quality of your image and the file size might be much, much larger. So this is just a great thing to be aware of if you are prioritizing file size. Next, we have the image options. So this specifically refers to the quality of the image itself. So as you can see at the moment, the quality is set to 12, which is this maximum option. If you just click on this drop down, as you can see, you have a few different settings. So low would set it to three and then medium set it to five. High is eight and then maximum is 10. But you can also push this up to 12 by using this slider at the bottom here. Now, as you can see, if I drag this slider all the way to the left, as this title indicates, the file size is going to be much smaller and the preview is now showing us that the file size is indeed much smaller. Whereas if I make this much larger, as you can see, it's going to be much, much higher. So you can use this slider just to be a bit more specific in order to set the quality to the setting that you want. You can also just input a value here. So next we can customize the format options of our JPEG. So we have three different modes. We have standard, optimized and progressive. So baseline standard basically allows you to save your JPEG as a file that will be supported by most web browsers. And then the next option that we have is baseline optimized. And this basically produces an image that has slightly better color quality, but is slightly smaller in file size. So if that's something that you want to prioritize in your JPEG format, then that's an option that you could choose. But one of the things you should remember when you choose either of these last two options, in fact, is that not all web browsers are actually going to support those options. 
So if you actually want to make sure that all web browsers do support your format, then you have to choose the top standard option. The last option that we have is progressive. And basically what progressive allows you to do, it's slightly hard to explain, but when an image is downloading, it will produce multiple versions of your image that are constantly getting more and more detailed. So for example, at the moment, the scans are set to three. So you have the option of three, four, and five. So this means that the image will load three different times, each getting much, much more sharp until you get the full quality image that you have saved. And as you can see, all of these options do also impact the file size. So this is also something that you should be aware of. Now, the final option that we have that isn't actually applicable to this image is the matte option at the top. So basically the matte option is only applicable if you have transparency within your image. Say for example, all of the sky between the leaves here was transparent and I'd actually cut all of this out within my layer. Then normally what you would see in Photoshop is a preview of lots of small gray boxes. And basically this shows that this space is fully transparent. And basically what the matte allows you to do is actually fill in that space because JPEG doesn't support alpha channels. And in most cases, you would want that area to be filled in a slightly different color. So basically, this is just an option that allows you to place a color within that transparent place. As I said, it isn't applicable to this image. So I'm actually going to set the image quality to high, and I'm going to leave it on baseline standard for this example. And then all we have to do now is just press on OK. And now our image will have saved. So I'll just quickly find the finder window to show you. And as you can see, I now have the finder window open and in the left hand corner here, I have a image, which is the image that we saved as a JPEG. So that in a bit more detail was how you can save your files in Photoshop as JPEGs. If you're also interested in learning how you can actually save your files as multi-page PDFs, then I have made a video on that and I'll leave that in the description below. And also please do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoy the content and to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.